child of God, you must understand this. The word of God is paramount. The word of God is very important in our walk with God. Everything that you need, the treasures of heaven are wrapped up in the word of God. Everything that makes life easy are wrapped up in the word of God. In the word of God, there is life. There is life in the word of God. So Jesus said it. He said they are spirit and they are life. So they have the ability to bring health to your body. It is the word of God that brings healing. It is the word of God that brings healing. It is the word of God that builds your feet for healing. So they are held to our flesh. Amen. That's number one benefit. A tree planted by the rivers of water. It benefits from nutrients. It needs water for transportation of nutrients. And nutrients are essential for that plant to be healthy and for that plant to live. So that's the very first thing. He said, thou shalt be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Number two is that we need water for a process called photosynthesis. You must understand that in creation, there are two kinds. We have what we call aerobic and anaerobic organisms. And humans, we fall under the category called aerobic organisms. Why? Because we need oxygen to breathe. Aerobic simply means depending on oxygen. They depend on oxygen for survival. Without water, plants cannot produce the oxygen that we breathe. Why? Because in the process of photosynthesis, for some of us who are scientists, we we'll agree that in the process of photosynthesis is the process of the splitting. Remember, water is H2O. In the process of photosynthesis, there's a separation between the hydrogen and the oxygen. 90% of the air, of the oxygen that humans consume comes from plants. Without photosynthesis, there won't be oxygen in the air for any human to survive. So for that to happen, plants must have water because it is in the process of that water that they break, they split the water to produce the oxygen that we breathe. It has a spiritual meaning. If we must survive as believers, if your spiritual life must survive, you need oxygen. But that oxygen comes from the word of God. Amen. It's very important you know these things. Oxygen comes from the word of God. So your survival depends on water. As plants depend on oxygen, we depend on the word of God as spiritual beings. The Bible says something in the book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. The Bible says, And God breathed into man, and man became a living soul that breath is important that breath is what gives us life and to sustain that life is the word of god you need the word of god as a child of god for sustainability you can have all the nutrients you need but if you don't have oxygen you are going to die that's what the word of god does the word of god is the breath of god it breathes into us new life daily. It breathes into us new life daily. So you need it. In fact, in the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, I beseech you, brother, with the message of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He said, for this is your reasonable act of service. He said, don't be conformed to the standard of this way, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that is good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. What does that mean? With the word of God, you are able to prove that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. The word of God is the breath of God that renews your mind daily. And as you are refined by the word, then 
the goodness of God will be revealed through your life. Just as plants produce oxygen for other creatures to benefit from, so our lives must be. The Word of God has the ability in you to produce the ministry or the words of reconciliation. It's very important. You must understand that we are not existing in silos. We are existing with people around our lives. The more you grow in the Word of God, the greater your impact will be with the people around your lives. Just as plants produce oxygen for other creatures to survive, so also when you are growing in the Word of God, the words of reconciliation are better from the Word of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, I love that scripture. It said, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he said he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It didn't end there. It went further to say, for all things were of God, who was reconciling the world to himself through Christ Jesus, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Wherewith, you see, God was not imputing unto us our transgression. God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ Jesus and has given us the words of reconciliation. So in us are the words of reconciliation. But how do you tap into those words of reconciliation? It's through the word of God. The words of reconciliation are the words we speak daily to people. That's why the Bible calls you the salt of the earth. That's why the Bible calls you the light of the world. When you are growing in the word of God, when you are dwelling in the word of God, your words are seasoned. Your words are edifying. Your words are encouraging. Your words are building. In fact, people depend on your words most of the time in the day. Just as I'm speaking to you, I am encouraging you. I am edifying you. I am building you. That is how oxygen is to every other creature. It gives life. That is our ministry. So he has given us the ministry of reconciliation and the words of reconciliation. You must understand that when you are planted in the world, you begin to produce, you become, you become a source for others. You become a source that feeds others. It can be just through your words. In fact, in Genesis chapter 12, when God was giving Abraham the blessings, out of the seven blessings that God declared in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2, only two were directly related to Abraham. Five of the blessings were for others. Let's look at them. So the first one he said, I will make your name great. So anyone that aligns with that name shall be great. That's what it means. So any person born in that lineage carries that name. And because they carry that name, they carry that greatness. So that's the benefit, number one. Number two, he says, I will bless those that bless you. So those that bless me, they will be blessed because they are blessing me. So they will benefit because they are blessing me. That's number two. Number three, through you shall the nations of the earth be blessed. You see? So the nations of the earth are blessed because of Abraham. So Abraham was a source for others. For he went further to say, I will bless those that bless you. So I've talked about bless those that bless you. I'll make you a blessing. Exactly. So he says, I will make you a blessing. A blessing means you are blessing others. You are blessed so much that you are blessing others. Hallelujah. So those are the things that God was talking to Abraham. Amen. I say, and say, true, you shall all the nations of the earth bless. So five out of the seven blessings were for others, not for Abraham. When you are deep in the word of God, when you are grounded in the word of God, your impact is felt by others. You become a blessing to others. You have the words of reconciliation. You become a blessing. Others benefit from your life. I want you to understand this. 
is very important when a tree is planted by the rivers of water even with plants big trees and small plants they have something in common when photosynthesis occurs then it gives birth to the process of what we call flowers flowers are things that when we have occasions let's say we have valentine's seasons we use flowers you know to reaffirm our love to our loved ones you see the benefits from plants number two we use flowers for decorations so we decorate events we decorate houses from flowers flowers are important even for bees because out of flowers bees have what we call nectar that they pull in the process of building honey which is medicinal so you see the chain effect of a plant of a tree planted by the rivers of water without water there can be photosynthesis that produces oxygen that we breathe they can't be the process of producing flour for decoration and bees for honey but without it also there won't be the bearing of fruits seeds are out of plants fruits are out of the process of photo post photosynthesis then trees begin to produce fruits and fruits are things that the tree, it doesn't benefit the tree it benefits everything around that tree amen in genesis chapter 50 and verse 20 joseph made a powerful confession before his brothers he said you meant it for evil he said but the lord turned it for good and there's a part that i love this is the part i love in that scripture to bring this day and to save many people so joseph understood that the process of him going through the pit of him going through potiphar's house of him sitting in prison was not just for him it was that many should be saved with him through him god revealing how they should take care of the family it's very important you are not living just for yourself you are living for the people that god has put also around your life so you're going to pray number two lord let my life be a blessing this year let my life be a blessing let me be like a tree planted by the rivers of water so that my life will be a blessing so that my life will impact others so that my life will be the light of the world so that my life will be the salt of the earth so that my life will produce good tidings so that my life will bring words of reconciliation even to the lost pray that prayer father in the name of jesus let my life be a blessing as i read in scriptures psalm 1 and verse 3 he said my life shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water let my life be a blessing joseph cried unto god he said oh ribaka shata that i may save many people ragada you meant it for evil but the lord turned it for good that I may save many people. Father, we understand that, oh God, we are not living in silos. Oh God, we are living with people every day around us. Let our lives be an overflow. Some of us, when you walk into a room, people are excited because your life inspires people your life encourages people your life gives people a reason and hope for living that's the reason that we that's the reason we are living that's why you are here you don't want to be someone that when you enter in a place everyone is discouraged everyone everyone is frightened everyone is you know feel unease is discomfortable your life should bring comfort around me the Bible says when Jesus entered the town, every people were excited. The Bible says, and the crowd gathered unto him. Why? Because he had the words of life. He was consistently speaking life unto men. He was consistently encouraging men, showing them their reason of living, showing them their portion in the kingdom of God. That is the reason why we are living. 
that is the reason why we are here our words must be seasoned with light we must bring the words of life to our children daily words of life to our spouse daily words of life to our friends relative daily we must be a solution center when people are discouraged they can talk to us we can give them words of encouragement words of affirmation and they will be encouraged they will find a reason to live that's the reason why we are here and that is what the scripture is telling us that when you dwell in the word so much when you dwell in the word of god you say you shall be like that tree planted by the rivers of water your life will produce life your life will produce life your life will produce light your life will produce salt you will season the lives of men in the cabra and the kasha oh we give you praise precious jesus i feel the holy ghost this morning thank you jesus thank you jesus